Okay, this is the Dragonfly um, design. Basically, you got your propulsion, your propulsion, which is right here. And that is controlled through right here. This is for people who have never seen one of these Dragonflies. The more you rev the engine, the faster it goes. And steering is on the controller right here. Now, the antenna is kept short right now just because for show. But it's essential that you keep your antenna extended. Steering is through the propeller. Turn left, turn right. The propeller is located right here. Probably can't see it very well, but it's shrouded. Okay, anyways, the propeller's in there, and there's a metal shroud to protect it as it lands. Uh, this is essential steering, so the aircraft is flying, and it will steer left and right, and uh, that's, that's pretty much how you fly it. Uh, the general idea is that the aircraft will be pushing itself forward, and if you're very good, you can keep it at a level plane with a slight rise as you go higher. Um, rev it too much, and it starts to go maybe faster, it will bob, it will tip, it will never have enough power to really just go at a total angle. So, um, other factors in it is that you got the push, so it's pushing, and it gives its forward momentum. That's giving it speed. This plane here will also deflect wind, so it will rise, kind of like a C curve, so it's going to want to go up. Plus you got the tail, which is gravity. Gravity will be pulling down. You can put clay here to pull it down. The clay adjusts it. You can put clay right at the necklace to also give it a down force. Also, adding weight to the front of any aircraft, glider, that increases a factor of momentum, speed. So if a gust of wind was to blow it or something, it wouldn't just fly like a piece of styrofoam. It would actually probably kind of hold it, resist it. Um, the tail is also a little help because when the wind picks and help and grabs it, it tends to keep the nose pointed in the direction of the wind. So if you get assaulted by the wind and it starts blowing, uh, you won't you won't suddenly lose control. So the tail helps. The ribbon actually does help. You can have a little piece of clay if you want to do away with the ribbon. Put it somewhere right here and it will uh, change the the angle of attack. But you don't want to change your angle of attack to the point that when you're revving the aircraft won't go faster. It will just be fighting its own weight. You'll be vulnerable. So you want to keep the aircraft ideally uh, at a plane. Think of that this this background object as a plane and you want to keep the aircraft not nose down not nose up but you want to keep it level just about level and of course when you're landing you might want to check the wires in your landing gear make sure they're pointed in the right direction now I tried hacking at the wings you have an extra set of wings as replacements you could uh, I tried putting an extra set of wings extended taped out but that didn't help out much, and uh, it didn't really fly very well, but that's my so opinion. You might want to fly. Fly. It's very popular. It was launched in 2007. As you can see, it's very, very simple in design, and yet complicated. The simple part I will explain. Oh, a lot of people will fly these dragonflies and will have trouble flying them, as they tend to tilt. The problem with it trying to get it to go higher is that as you speed up, it would cause the aircraft to speed up. And therefore, going very fast, you can go into a stall. The other tr problem is wind. Wind is a problem that would actually, actually pick it up. People revving it will go at maximum speed, very high. And at very high speeds, it tends to do the thing where it, it's moving like a ship, where it's going up and down, up and down, and you're really not gaining much. Also, no two birds are the same. So what I did is I figured out a way to um, increase its ability to fly better. You're going to need some clay, modeling clay.
You can buy these at hobby shops. And might as well buy a few more of these birds because you're going to have a lot of fun. You want to get some clay and slice up just a bit of clay. You take the clay and you can make a necklace out of it. Here's what you do. You take the clay and you make it into a long, long bit. And of course, you wrap it around the neck of the dragonfly. So now he's wearing a necklace. This now makes the dragonfly heavier at the front and will change the characteristics of the dragonfly. So when you're flying, depending on how much clay you put in the front, sometimes the wind is picking and the dragonfly will wave up and down. Well, this actually stops the teetering and tottering. Other things is the tail was also meant to, uh, to also help out. It keeps the dragonfly sometimes slightly pointed nose up so that the thrust bouncing off it will make the dragonfly lift and fly better. That's why the tail is actually there. You can eliminate the tail and still have that kind of lift by replacing it with a little wad of clay in the back. How much clay you put in there is entirely up to you, but you will also change the characteristics. Um, the other thing is sometimes some dragonflies won't fly very well if you change the clay, if you put clay in the front or in the back. So sometimes if it's not broken, don't fix it, but always bring a little wad of clay and this will change it. As you can see, it's more like a teeter-totter. So once you've figured that out, go out there and experiment and I'm sure you'll get a lot of flights. Here we are again. This is my fleet of other dragonflies. I have a lot of dragonflies. There is a reason why. Why buy so many dragonflies? Well, the theory goes that when you're flying one and you've got a flight of about uh, seven minutes in the air, maybe ten minutes, and then you've got to bring it on the ground and you've got to charge it. Charging is a pain in the butt. So, what you want to do is you fly them and then you set one up on charger put it in the charge and that one sits out. Now you cycle the next bird in and you go out and you have a lot of flying time. You fly again. When you're done flying you uh, take the other dragonfly, you put it down and you charge it. Now they're both charging. Take the third bird bug and go out and have a ball. Fly more. When you're done uh, charge it. Now go all the way back to the very, very first dragonfly that you had charging. Should be charged and ready to go, you're still flying. This will uh, allow you more experience, non-stop flight time, plus if you always crash, it's always a good idea to be more redundant, keep a few more uh, dragonflies at hand. Uh, the price has gone down on some dragonflies. Uh, you can get them at Walmart now for $25. I hope they keep them in production. Um, another added note is that, oops, that uh, you never know what's it, what's going to be. Uh, you you'll have friends coming in and they'll want to fly, so you might want to keep more than one blue and green dragonflies. Keep it like that. Identi identify your dragonflies by marks because it'll be confusing. You might want to um, mark it. In this case, I wrote 3G, which is the third dragonfly green, and you do the same with the remote. Mark the controller so that you can identify the control uh, 3G and you can keep track of the batteries so you won't go nuts as to which controller has the fullest charge and what dragonfly is ready to go and happy flying! <laughs>